In the deepest zone of the forest, isolated by two towering mountains, a beam of light is seen by all the animals. This beam of light comes from Yu Zi, who died choking on a glass of water and reincarnated as a shining tree that speaks. Upon realizing his situation, Yu Zi is outraged at reincarnating as a plant rather than as a protagonist of a delicious manhwa who would build a harem. Surveying his surroundings, he realizes he's in a forest, amidst two great mountains. He can see and feel things, and the only thing he can move is a small branch at his top. Being in a forest, he fears monsters might attack him. But as a tree, the only monster that really worries and poses a threat to him is the woodpecker. Before he can truly feel fear, he hears a noise from the sky. Looking up, he sees a metal bird, or rather, a commercial airplane. This reassures him as it indicates he's in the current century. He ends up making a quick move with the branch to kill two bees that were bothering him and receives a notification from the system. You have obtained 0.2 evolution points. A projector appears in front of him with information and data about him. When he uses the evolution points he just gained, he manages to increase the number of branches he can use simultaneously. Testing his new arms, he spends a month killing animals in the forest and manages to significantly increase the number of arms he uses simultaneously. He even creates a drill that uses air movement to break a stone. A month has passed, and now he's much stronger. His size has increased considerably compared to normal trees. The roots are absorbing more energy, and the branches are getting stronger. His lifespan is only 20 years, but in that time, Yuzi could even become a world tree. However, Yuzi is not alone. Among his branches, he discovers a secret nest. And it's not just any nest, it's the home of mutant peregrine falcons. These fast and agile birds are a valuable addition to his forces. If Yuzi can tame them and bring them to his side, he'll have his own personal air force. The world around him is different from his previous life. The forest is infested with mutant animals, devouring wolves, giant ants, queen spiders, axe-headed snakes, and even King Kong? Yuzi continues his hunt, collecting resources from the slain monsters to feed the falcon's nest. With an accumulated evolution point, Yuzi decides to strengthen his roots and trunk. Unlike branches, which can be strengthened with just 0.1 point, a root requires a whole point. He imagines that, since the root costs 10 times more, it could be 10 times more efficient than a branch. His goal? Finally being able to move freely through the forest. However, when Yuzi strengthens his roots, the pain is intense. They spread in all directions, like a drill piercing his skin. The original root, once static, now turns into something red and suspicious moving freely. Determined, he tries to move the trunk, but the pain is unbearable, like waxing his sack. He hides that red root, and suddenly hears a noise in the bushes. His combat mode is immediately activated. Upon examining the area, he comes across a wounded fox, with a deep cut on its chest. The wound is dark and likely poisoned, meaning he can't feed the sparrow chicks with the fox's meat. However, a system notification informs that the tree's branches have detoxifying and energizing properties. So, with his tree neurons, he thinks of healing the fox and then killing it, recovering the points he spent on healing it, and still giving its meat to the sparrows to eat, stonks. Before he can execute the fox, it surprises him with a lethal blow that captures Yu Zi's heart, who can't resist and ends up falling for the fox's charm. However, the tree sap not only heals the fox but also evolves it, transforming it into a fire fox. Curious, Yu Zi asks the fox about the reason for its weakened state, and somehow, she manages to communicate, revealing that she was hunted by humans due to the value of her fur. The fox ends up hearing a noise coming from the bushes and flees, leaving Yuzi alert. Shortly after, Yuzi comes across two young humans. He hides and observes them as they approach. To his surprise, they call him, Daddy. It seems their father is buried beneath the protagonist. The sisters came to make an offering in memory of their father. After making an offering and praying to their late father, the sisters decide to take a bath in the lake. Meanwhile, the protagonist, driven by questionable intentions, tries to spy on the girls. However, a tree blocks his view, and any attempt to reposition himself is thwarted by the intense pain that prevents him from moving. Eventually, the sisters leave, promising to return to visit their father's grave. Two weeks later, the canyon, which seemed to be a peaceful place, is now flooded with dangerously strong monsters. The protagonist's falcons are helping him fight these creatures. They are engaged in a frenzied aerial battle against the golden eagle, which incapacitates the falcons with its powerful cry. However, the eagle is caught off guard by the fire fox, which despite its effort, couldn't do much against the eagle, which captures and hurls it violently to the ground. Before the eagle can react, the protagonist intervenes, 
using his ability to instantly defeat the Golden Eagle, gaining 70 evolution points. Since the protagonist began feeding the Falcons with his life essence, they have grown much faster, and the Fire Fox continues to assist him. However, the forest remains a dangerous place, inhabited by high-level monsters like the Eagle. Therefore, the protagonist needs to be more cautious and strengthen himself even further. And to strengthen himself, it is essential to strengthen allies first. Thus, the protagonist feeds them with his slime, also known as life essence. However, the tranquility is abruptly interrupted when a surprise attack severs a large part of him, destroying one of his roots. The attack is the work of the axe-headed snake, a foe much superior to the bird faced earlier. A battle begins. The snake uses the axe on its head to attack, while he defends himself with the remaining roots. Using the points acquired earlier, he enhances his roots, completely immobilizing the snake. With a final blow, he strikes the snake's belly. Despite the great damage, the blow is not enough to penetrate the snake's tough skin. Feeling fearful but persistent, he projects his killing intent onto the snake, forcing it to flee. He wins, but suffers significant damage to his structure, and it is likely that the snake will return even stronger. Evolving in the forest is a challenge, and he is still weak. However, the opportunity to strengthen arises. A screen indicates that he can evolve to the next level, and he accepts without hesitation. His body and those of his pets begin to regenerate and evolve. An intense light spreads throughout the forest. After evolution, he emerges in a new form, the Mutant Willow. The Fire Fox evolves to Stage 7, and the Peregrine Falcons reach Stage 5, acquiring Red Crests. Now stronger, he sends the Falcons in search of the Axe-Headed Snake. They shoot like bullets, and he speculates that with this speed, they may be able to pierce the snake's tough armor. The Fox, now with a more imposing appearance, demonstrates a significant increase in strength. But things are never simple. While inspecting his status panel, he hears voices asking for help. They are the two sisters who visited their father's grave earlier. They flee from a herd of furious monsters, likely attracted by the light emitted by the protagonist before evolving. The reason monsters attack him is because they see him as a source of energy, and whoever devours him will absorb all the energy he possesses. Before the monsters can attack the girls, the protagonist's pets intervene saving them at the last second, and a monster war ensues. The monsters try to advance but are hindered by the roots. Some come close, but they are quickly annihilated. The strongest ones are subdued to obey him. After the battle, a new problem arises, the sisters. He cannot let them go, as they know he is a monster. However, killing them would turn him into a demon tree and attract unwanted attention. His solution is to pretend to be their deceased father. Initially skeptical, they ask him to reveal their names and a secret that only their father would know. With the help of the system, he reveals that one of them is in love with a boy from another village, which makes them believe him a little more. He removes some hair clips he had made and, reflexively, accesses memories of the girl's last moments with their father, perhaps because he was buried under his roots. He feels their souls are intertwined. During the conversation, the sisters reveal that the world is changing, and energy known as magic or spiritual energy is altering the composition of living beings, causing evolution in species. The younger sister feeds the captured wolves, who initially react with hostility but calm down upon seeing the fox. With the situation calmer, he checks his status and discovers that, in addition to a significant increase in strength, he has gained two new abilities, one that creates a mist barrier to confuse creatures and another that generates hallucinogenic smoke, inducing visions. He spreads the mist through the forest and asks the fox to take the sisters back to the village. He has also acquired the ability to evolve old skills using points and spends almost all of them to elevate these skills to level 2. The advancement is so great that on that night the special beast cannot rest, feeling the rise of an extremely powerful being. He tests the effect of the hallucinogenic gas on the wolves, making them see their worst fears, and plans to save points to improve the regeneration ability. His evolution is unstoppable, with roots now over 100 meters deep, reaching unknown caves even for humans. However, Despite his strength, the concern persists. The axe-headed snake is still a danger, and hunting it could attract even more powerful monsters. For now, he decides to wait. The wolves, still under the influence of hallucinogens, begin to bark, and to silence them, he whips them using his branches. The sisters disapprove of this when they see it, and treat the wolves' wounds, creating a kind of bond between them. In fact, they have a great affinity with animals and get along very well with all of them. However, this piece doesn't seem like it will last long. In a distant cave, the snake is recovering and storing energy for its revenge. 
The next day, in the human village, the two sisters were excitedly heading to the mountain, and their grandfather noticed that since their father's death they hadn't shown such excitement. The protagonist sent the fox to fetch them, and it is evident that the relationship between them is becoming closer, to the point where one of the sisters brings manure to Yu Zi, believing it would further strengthen him. On the way back, the weather became cloudy, and unexpectedly, they were attacked by the axe-headed snake. <coughs> Meanwhile, the protagonist was hunting mutant bees to accumulate more points. He gave some of his essence to the falcons that helped him and planned to use the acquired points to evolve his mutant roots. As he enhances them, he feels excruciating pain, as if his body is tearing apart, and from the red roots emerge new black roots with small hairs, more threatening than the normal ones causing fear even in the captured animals. He tested the new root, which moved like a snake through the forest, capturing all the animals it encountered, even interrupting a love declaration between two little pigs. Like an unstoppable beast, he captured and absorbed all the animals, gaining 210 points in moments. He felt powerful, able to track all the monsters with his roots. However, a concern arose. The fox had been gone for a long time to fetch the sisters and had not yet returned. He sent the falcons to search for them, but the fox returned severely injured. He used his life energy to heal her and, when he was about to speak, he heard a noise. Looking up, he saw the snake holding one of the sisters in its mouth with a malevolent look. The snake tried to swallow the sister, but the protagonist was quick and struck its neck with the root, saving the girl. The snake realized it was still no match for the tree and fled. Seeing the injured girl, the protagonist began to infuse life essence into her, in a desperate attempt to save her, investing all his points in this effort. It was found that the other sister had been found and was in the human hospital, in critical condition. The grandfather was extremely worried, as they thought the missing sister had been devoured by the snake. The protagonist released all the monsters he had kept in prison to help in preparing for the fight against the serpent. Recently, Cases of disappearances of planes and ships have become more common. The cause was identified. Groups of mutant crows attacking planes and sea monsters destroying ships. Humans have joined forces to combat these evolved creatures, studying the environment and detecting the spiritual energy of the monsters. A monster with over a thousand spiritual energy already requires the intervention of an entire army, and those with over 5,000 spiritual energy are immune to common weapons. In the region, there are at least 8 energy points above 5,000. One of these points, with over 18,000 spiritual energy, represents extreme danger. After this discovery, we see a snake annihilating a heron. The black cow tries to attack the snake with its horn, but it is useless. The snake is unstoppable, and all attempts to harm it result in defeat. The monsters, however, seek revenge for the girl injured by the snake. A squirrel fights fiercely, tearing a piece from the snake, and a pack of wolves manages to damage its eyes. The fire fox emerges as the final opponent of the snake. They have met before. The first time was a predator-prey relationship, the second when the snake fought with Yu Zi, the third protecting the sisters, and now the fourth attempt. The snake realizes that the fox is growing stronger, and decides she must be eliminated. In the battle, the snake, aiming for a perfect body and supremacy in the food chain, realizes the fox is not yet strong enough to face it. However, the fox, like a raging phoenix, summons the birds to attack the snake. The eight falcons emitted a threatening cry, which intimidated not only the snake but also the fox, who felt the pressure emanating from them. When two objects rub against each other, they generate heat. The friction between the air and the body, at high speed, can produce so much heat that it can burn and lead to death. With this in mind, the falcons developed a new technique, ballistic diving, which would hurt both the enemy and themselves. In the early days of their lives, the mother of the falcons was killed while looking for food, leaving them hungry for days until Yu Zi found them. With the ability to fly through the sky and strengthen themselves, they lived happily until a great sorrow arose. The best way to take revenge was to use their best move to achieve victory. Like a cannon, they launched themselves at the snake. The impact was so strong that it almost threw the fox away, and the snake was dragged meters into the forest. The falcons were were severely injured, and the fox, as she approached, saw a pitiful scene. All her companions were on the ground, but the snake was still alive. As the snake was about to deliver the final blow to the fox, a black trunk protected her. Yuzi emerged from the mist, and the snake immediately understood it was going to die. The first time it fought Yuzi, it managed to eat some branches and evolved to stage 9. The second time, it attacked the sisters because they smelled like him. But now, it wouldn't be able to escape. Yuzi used all his roots to capture the snake and pull it towards him. Face to face with Yuzi, the snake felt only fear. Even so, 
It gathered all its strength to try to fight against the tree. However, already weakened, the snake was repeatedly struck at the spot of the wound made by the falcons. Yuzi, Zi, and Rage, could only think of the girls who died at the hands of the snake. With hatred in his mind, he gathered all the roots into a fist and delivered the final blow. The animals that had fought earlier, now fully wounded, saw Yu Zi, and Raged repeatedly striking blows on the already dead snake. So many blows were struck that almost nothing was left of it. With only hatred and fury, Yuzi reflected that neither the snake nor he were wrong. In this world, the strong feed on the weak. No matter how much anger one may have, if they are weak, they will not survive. The life lost will become power and nurture new life. But even knowing this, he was still sad. At night, Shaolin's body was left by the fox in the village. As a reward for fighting alongside him in revenge, Yuzi gave them a little life essence. The pack of wolves and the wild cow evolved, the wolves awakened wind attributes and the cow, earthquake attributes. However, the rest of the animals, although greatly increased in power, did not rise in rank or change appearance. The pack of wolves, along with all the other animals, reverently honored Yu Zi, wishing to continue by his side. Yu Zi was moved and promised to protect them. To survive, one must be strong, strong enough to face everything, strong enough to be feared by all. On that cold, starry night, the battle against the snake seemed not to have happened. Yu Zi was immersed in his own body. The falcons patrolled the air while the wolves patrolled the land. The heron, the cow, and the monkey cleaned up the battlefield. The fox watched over, and the squirrel slept. While Yu Zi scolded the squirrel, a light appeared behind him, and in that light, a girl appeared. The light rushed towards him, and as he tried to defend himself with the branches, they passed through the light without effect. As the light approached, he recognized the girl within it as Xiao Qin. She entered a kind of hibernation within him, drawn by the nectar produced by Yu Zi, which has the power to bring souls back, although it is still not very strong. Yu Zi enveloped Xiao Qin's soul with his roots, awakening her. But she seems to be no longer the same Xiao Qing as before, with no memories of who she is or of Yu Zi. He feels guilty, thinking that his longing brought her back, even if only as a spirit. He promises to protect her. He then discovers that her sister is still alive in a coma, and the protagonist finds hope of perhaps reviving her. Yu Zi uses a bit of the life essence in her, strengthening her and making her grow a little. Xiao Qing sees her sister's body in a hospital, apparently in a coma, but able to make small movements. After using this power, Xiao Qing becomes exhausted, and Yu Zi suggests that she could revive in Xiao Ling's body in this world. The scene shifts to miles away, where two men atop a foggy mountain discuss their next target, which happens to be the mountain where Yu Zi resides. They are magical beast hunters, and one of them, a hooded man, is an extraordinary, capable of controlling spiritual energy. Extraordinaries are people who can control spiritual energy, but they maximize this ability by gaining powers above humans. Meanwhile, Yu Zi plays with the girl, discovering new abilities like telekinesis, impressed by how quickly she learns. Xiao Qing was killed by wild animals, and the villagers are furious. Yu Zi, however, does not intend to take advantage of the situation to show his power, as fighting against humans is the last option. Their goal is to turn the mountain into their world. Suddenly, it starts raining, and Yu Zi feels a strange spiritual energy, sensing people approaching through the mist. It's the two men from the mountain, who are now traveling on foot, sending a subordinate to fetch two mysterious boys. The hooded man hears screams coming from the village and runs at high speed over the rocks surprising everyone around. Yu Zi is not intimidated by the presence of these men. On the contrary, he wishes to be found to demonstrate his true strength. Xiao Qing attempts to merge her body with that of her sister, blending her soul with hers. To assist in this process, Yu Zi offers a bit of his life essence, while the extraordinary observes Xiao Ling's comatose body. He stands there, observing her, feeling a weak spiritual pressure emanating from the girl's body. People awaken in different ways. Some need spiritual cleansing or soul resonance, and the time varies. Around the girl, he notices that the element she will acquire will be fire, one of the rarest. The hooded man administers a healing potion into the girl's mouth, while Xiao Qing is about to evolve to level 5. Her soul expands in all directions, and when both events occur simultaneously, a bright red energy radiates through the forest, and Xiao Ling awakens from the coma. The village celebrates with joy, but the hooded man is alarmed by her rapid awakening, indicating extraordinary talent. To celebrate the girl's awakening, the village organizes a grand feast with plenty of food for the soldiers. However, Xiao Ling seems not to be enjoying it. She acts as a spy, trying to gather as much information about the soldiers as possible. She questions the reason for their presence there, and Yan, the hooded man, 
explains that they are investigating mutated monsters in the city. Xiao Ling tries to confuse him, saying that no one in the village has seen a mutant beast, but he responds that the satellite used to track mana beasts detected a presence there. The protagonist is interested in the satellite, and asks for more information. Yen explains that the satellite can only detect abnormalities in certain places, and the information is not precise, but due to the extreme concentration of mana in the area, it began pointing there. The protagonist suspects that this is the result of his fight with the axe-headed snake, but now, with the fog, it will be difficult to find it. However, there is still a chance of being discovered, and if that happens, he will have to fight. Xiao Ling's grandfather talks to Yan about taking her for treatment after the mission, and they continue. Entering the forest and lost in the mist, they realize they are walking in circles and being watched by animals. The protagonist recognizes that Yen is a strong man and already has a plan to deal with them. Deeper into the forest, they hear howls in the distance and prepare, frightened. Like a lion attacking its prey, the wolf captures the army captain, who fires shots from special weapons while Yen kicks the wolf, causing it to release the captain. The wolf, not killed by the attack, returns and deeply wounds Yen before disappearing into the fog. The raccoon also attacks, and its strength allows it to make several cuts on the soldiers. The soldier fires a penetrating bullet at the raccoon, causing a huge explosion, but when the smoke clears, they see the pack of wolves protecting it from the blast. Everyone is extremely scared, and the protagonist, although previously human, is determined to eliminate this group. However, something strange happens. Yen begins to generate lightning around him and orders everyone to move as far away as possible. The soldiers, now gravely injured and furious with the monsters that survived the major attacks, carry the bodies of six of their friends. They leave the forest miserably, while the protagonist, concerned about the humans, plans to evolve to a point where they can no longer defeat him. He asks Xiao Qing about the whereabouts of her sister's body, which apparently is being transported by car to their base. Interestingly, the sister's body awakened the fire attribute, just like Xiao Qi. The guards are enchanted by her, watching her intently. However, she suddenly falls asleep with her head against the glass, leading them to debate whether to call her the sleeping girl or sleeping beauty. It seems that Xiao Qi cannot control her sister's body for long. The protagonist decides to give her the essence of life to extend the control time and accelerate her evolution. The wolves return from battle, carrying their raccoon friend, who is seriously injured. The protagonist realizes that that Yen is formidable, as most beasts would have been destroyed by a single attack from him. To please his subordinates, he creates a small lake for them to recover. Although not as good as the Ling Underground River, which contains a strong amount of aura, the lake helps heal their wounds. Thanks to Yuzi's roots, which absorb the aura from the river, the main trunk has grown significantly in just 10 days. The Ling Underground River is where a strong amount of concentrated aura is contained and should only be used by monsters. Xiao Ling arrives at the Institute of the Extraordinary, where she is greeted by the association president, who is interested in her strength level. The president talks with Yen, who is quite injured after entering the protagonist's forest. Yen files a report, and the president decides to classify the area as yellow code, indicating that it is not so dangerous. Yen also mentions Xiao Ling and suggests that the new generation of extraordinaries may be the strongest of all. Explained briefly, Yellow code is one of the three security codes, green for areas inhabited by humans, yellow for areas with some danger requiring vigilance, and red for high-risk areas where survival is uncertain. There are also forbidden territories for life, such as the Bermuda Triangle, which was already dangerous before the energy crisis. Back in the forest, we witness a confrontation between a badger and a fox. Due to the level difference, the fox knocks down the badger with a slap. The resilient badger gets up furiously, but the protagonist intervenes to break up the fight. He feels safe for now, as no additional soldiers have been sent. His wolves bring offerings, and he gains evolutionary points by finishing off the prey. He realizes the advantage of having creatures hunting for him, allowing him to evolve effortlessly. He allows the wolves to feed on the captured prey, while the fox abstains to maintain her tough stance. The monkey, on the other hand, eagerly eats the protagonist's leaves, which annoys him, but he accepts. With the accumulated points, the protagonist decides to enhance his branches, which now number 250, and gains a new paralysis ability. He tests the ability on the badger, which seems to work for a while but is not very effective. Xiao Qing explains that badgers are immune to poison. The protagonist reflects on the potential of Xiao Ling, who has just awakened the fire element, and Xiao Qing, who already possesses strong spiritual strength and has the ability to evolve even further with his sap. He anticipates that soon he will create a powerful being, a fusion of animals and humans.
Xiao Qing prepares for an exam that will determine if she will become an extraordinary. She is ready to face anyone who tries to interfere with her path. The Institute of the Extraordinary is compared to a college in this world, where those who awaken spiritual powers are sent to train and perfect themselves. Functioning almost like an underground city, the institute is populated by teachers who are graduated extraordinaries, resembling the hunter exam. The director emphasizes in his lecture the need for human evolution to ensure the survival of future generations. Institute candidates must undergo admission tests, the first being a spiritual pressure test that measures each one's spiritual energy. Yen Lengling impresses everyone by reaching 2,000 spiritual energy, a ranking considered superior. However, Shaoling exceeds all expectations by reaching 6,054 causing the measuring machine to explode. Candidates with a level above 100 are referred to specific test fields, and Yen is responsible for the upper-level ranking test. The challenge is simple. If anyone can touch him, they all pass. Despite the collective effort, Yen remains undefeated until Xiaoling, using her fire power, almost manages to touch him before being betrayed by a classmate. Remembering her master's words, she quickly grabs this girl by the head and throws her to the ground. With every intention of killing her prepares an attack that at the last second is prevented from hitting by the teacher. After the incident, Xiao Ling returns to the forest in spiritual form and reports the events to the protagonist, who is impressed with the outcome, as she will now have private lessons. He also learns that all the residents of the Van village have moved to the city. Now he will be able to expand the territory even further without worrying about the presence of humans over time. During the winter, Yuzi further strengthens his branches and, despite the boredom, knows that soon he will face new challenges. In the northwest region, at an energy crystal mine, a group of scouts is clearing the area of monsters until they come across a silver centipede. Meanwhile, the protagonist in the forest is close to reaching the limit of evolution, only needing to strengthen his eight roots. He fears that upon reaching this level, the energy he emits may reveal his location to humans, something he never feared before. As he was once a human himself, Yu Zi knows their destructive potential. Xiao Qing brings news from the Institute of the Extraordinary. A squad sent to the region was decimated by the centipede, whose strength is almost 120,000, far beyond the usual power of the mutant beasts in the area. Extraordinaries have been sent to deal with the threat, but the battle will not be easy. The protagonist is surprised to learn that humans have discovered the spiritual crystals and are using them to accelerate their evolution. He feared that upon reaching level 3 of the Extraordinaries, he could offer peace to humans, but now sees that this may not be possible due to their rapid evolution. The Centipede, a level 2 Extraordinary, has already wiped out almost all the troops, which is alarming, as not even the protagonist is at that level. He suspects that the Centipede may have the ability to steal the power of others. Xiao Ling, dressed in her school uniform, asks her master for permission to investigate the northwest region and questions how the centipede was not detected earlier. He suggests that the centipede may have a cloaking ability or that the mine itself is the cause of its presence. Back in the forest, a flying rooster captures the ant queen and throws her near the protagonist, attracting an entire swarm. After exterminating the insects, Yuzi finally accumulates enough points to evolve his roots, but forgets the intense pain that accompanies evolution. The badger, after sharing food with squirrels, is attacked by a giant creature and almost killed. The wolves find him and bring him back to the tree, where the protagonist uses his essence of life to heal him. The protagonist realizes the danger of letting extremely evolved monsters roam free and orders his animals to search and kill the creature. Before he can act, Xiao Qing brings more news. The spiritual stones can isolate spiritual energy, which explains why the centipede defeated everyone. This poses a major problem. Yu Zi, Questioning the origin of the Ling Underground River's spiritual energy, suspects that underground stones may be providing this energy. This theory is reinforced by the possibility that the monster that attacked the badger may have come from this energy source. To investigate, he devises a plan with his companions. The wolves are tasked with tracking the origin of the monster, the birds with finding entrances, and Xiao Qing with exploring the underground tunnels. Upon entering the tunnels, Xiao Qing discovered that they were filled with the protagonist's roots, and as she advanced deeper into the tunnels, Xiao Qing encountered hundreds of energy crystals and heard a powerful cry coming from inside the cave, a cry with overwhelming celestial strength. As she approached, she saw a giant turtle sleeping beside a blood herb, a treasure the turtle used to accelerate its evolution. Xiao Qing was discovered by the turtle, but her attacks did not cause any damage. Using her telekinesis, Xiao Qing stole the blood herb, initiating a battle. She attempted to use levitated stones against the turtle, which responded with a powerful kick on the ground 
causing an earthquake and destroying the mine. Xiao Qin tried to flee to her master, but was stopped by the turtle, which created an earth prison. Although Xiao Qin could pass through, the blood herb she carried could not. At the critical moment, the badger, previously humiliated by the turtle, returned to the fight, driven by hatred. He attacked the turtle with speed and fury, but could not penetrate its tough skin. Each of the turtle's attacks was lethal, but the badger, known for its territorial and vengeful nature, did not give up. At the height of his fury, the badger awakened electric powers, but still was no match for the turtle. When all seemed lost, Xiao Qing's master, like a black dragon made of roots, intervened. He formed a fearsome creature with his roots and transferred his core to it. Facing the turtle, Yu Zi confirmed his suspicions. As it evolved, the turtle used the minerals to conceal its aura. He praised the badger for its bravery and took over the fight, launching a frontal attack that broke the turtle's horns. After tending to the injured badger, he confronted the turtle and, with a few attacks, defeated it, gaining 8,000 evolution points. Yu Zi, now excited by the discovery of the cave full of energy crystals, created a tunnel and an underground shelter so that his animals could benefit from the stones and cultivate even more power. After a day of collection, the protagonist accumulated enough minerals for his evolution. With the renewal of his aura, the mutant birds that resisted the cold and did not migrate like common birds were exterminated. All the forest animals began to be pursued and captured by Yu Zi's expansive roots, which now extended beyond the mountain. Yu Zi assumed a new physical and spiritual form, transforming into a huge white tree. With the ability to control the earth element, Yu Zi could create a maze of thorns around him. His regeneration also improved significantly. Even if his entire body were destroyed, he could fully restore himself from a few remaining roots, and his mere presence caused the vegetation around him to flourish. The birds warned of the presence of a suspicious target, which was subdued miles away. The cow, attracted by a plant that grew on top of Yu Zi, consumed the rock flower, a product of Yuzi's excess energy, and instantly evolved into a level 9 mutant bison. Most surprisingly, the creature acquired the ability to speak. With the elevation to level 9, the creature's spiritual consciousness expanded. The firewolf, nearing level 9, was also about to awaken its consciousness if it continued to cultivate well. Meanwhile, Yuzi continued to explore the cave and mine energy crystals. Xiao Qi, in Shaoling's body, demonstrated remarkable feats at the academy. The professor summoned Xiao Ling to reveal a new discovery, a monster with DNA from both human and wolf, a completely new form of life. The experiment presented turned out to be a mistake. Human regenerative cells cannot withstand the invasion of werewolf cells. The scientist, seeking to help humanity in decline ascend in this new world, conducts risky experiments. A new group of volunteers willing to sacrifice themselves for the experiment is on the way, and the scientist is seeking a life form with super regeneration to complete his project. Shaoling, remembering her master, fears for what might happen to him. In the middle of the protagonist's forest, a squad of extraordinary scouts the area. The bespectacled boy is apprehensive, fearing the stories of people getting lost and dying in the mountain. But the scarred man reassures the group, trusting in Qian Qin. They are there not to subdue monsters, but to collect herbs. Qian Qin signals the approach of something, and through the mist, they spot two large eyes watching. What seemed to be a threat is just a kitten, easily subdued. The journey continues until Qian Qin alerts to a real danger. A white tiger with blue eyes attacks ferociously, eliminating the scarred man. The group tries to fight, but is easily overpowered, leaving only Qian Qin. In desperation, Qian Qin is saved by black tentacles that capture the tiger, and she faints. Back in the protagonist's clearing, the tiger is surrounded by the forest animals. Yuzi uses a new ability that, in addition to evolving creatures, makes them subconsciously obey him. The once ferocious tiger becomes docile quickly. Curious about the effect of sap on humans, Yuzi uses Qian Qin and subjects her to the sap. She begins to speak of a destroyed world dominated by giant trees, where everything is controlled by the great tree. The sap not only works on humans but also makes them see Yu Zi as a god. He inquires about her ability, and she mentions having a sixth sense and intuition, which makes Yu Zi laugh, considering it a minor skill. He releases her, and tells her she can stay to take care of the animals. She hesitates, but the sap makes her accept immediately. Yu Zi instructs her to praise him repeatedly and then orders her to undress, but she doesn't obey. There seems to be a limit to the effect of the sap on humans. He injects the sap into the other two captured men, and builds a small house for them to live in. Yuzi's clearing is transforming. Vegetation grows rapidly, 
There is a lake where animals can bathe and heal wounds. An underground tunnel provides access to the mines. And now there is a house where humans will live. After enhancing his Earth ability, the protagonist can now move freely around the world. He has accumulated almost 13,500 evolution points after defeating the turtle and intends to use these points to further elevate the level of the Earth element. The number of points gained when defeating a creature depends on its spiritual power. For example, defeating a creature with 80,000 points of spiritual power would earn him 8,000 evolution points. To test his evolved ability, he creates four pillars that elevate the animals standing on them, including the badger, which accidentally falls and injures itself, continuing to reinforce the earth element. He alters the structure of the location he's in, with each root of his body functioning like the turtle's shell. Using all simultaneously, he can lift lands hundreds of meters high, like bones forming a protective structure. Meanwhile, in another part of the world, a tourist watches a tsunami approaching the sea, bringing with it under water monsters devastating the city. A third order transcendentalist serpent emerges from the sea, causing despair in the White House, as its power is estimated between 170,000 and 250,000. Three nuclear missiles were launched, but only one hit the serpent, which submerged again. Humanity faces a crisis against the aquatic monsters, threatening the extinction of the human species. Thank you for watching the legendary tree so far. If you like the video and subscribe to the channel, I'll do the next part soon. See you next time. Bye bye.